morning we're at the Tampa airport. We're headed to Colorado. Yep, heading to Denver and we're going to stay in Estes Park this trip and then Wyoming and then coming back to Boulder before we leave uh, again out of Denver. So here we are early morning in Tampa. And stay tuned because yep. we're going to stay in the most haunted oh. hotel. Yeah, a little nervous. That's going to be fun. Okay. Well, it's in the haunted room, by the way, so yeah. stay tuned for the most haunted hotel. Let's hope the I most make it. Haunted room. Yeah. All right. Fun. Okay, we are at the Denver airport. We made it. It's actually very hot here, and we just found our shuttle bus. Um, we did a cheap shuttle, or we did a cheap car. And oh, the car so, doesn't look cheap. Well, no, the car doesn't. I mean, well, we don't know yet. The <laughs> picture looks not cheap. No, it looks like we got a nice car. I'm a little worried about the van. I look at the truck. Okay. 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 It's, it's quite beat up, so, and it's as cheap as on top. <laughs> okay, wish us luck. We'll update you. So, we got to the parking lot to get this great Dodge Ram here, which looks perfectly fine. And across the way, Paul sees a Rubicon. And he's like, let's go get the Rubicon instead. So we are now taking a Rubicon up to Estes Park. Okay, this will be fun. So we are walking up to the Falls River Inn. Right there, the Inn on Falls River. Um, and we are about two miles from the entrance to Estes Park. Yeah, it's really, really nice. Well, no, the entrance to the National Park. Yeah, Estes I'm sorry. Park, the, National the National Park. The National Park. The Rocky Mountain National Park. Or Strawberry Road. We're going to do that later. Hello. We are checking in. Okay, let's see if it's ready. It's open. It was? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's weird. So we're at the inn at Falls River in Estes Park, Colorado. Right. And this is our room. This is our room. Number 11. Number 11. And this is our steel place. So um, in Estes Park, the hotels can be kind of expensive. And I looked and looked, and I was trying to find a good steel spot. So this is, um, you can kind of see, we'll show you around over here. It's a cute little complex here. And you can see we got like front row parking. This is definitely an older building, but let's go check out our steel our still of a room and see how we did it's a still of a room we did. small room but that's okay uh knotty pine paneling which is very woodsy which is very woodsy because we are in estes park colorado actually, in the woods and they actually have a couple of chairs here nightstand um queen size bed not a king size bed which we usually do and i didn't test the bed oh it's a it's a memory foam so it's, it's comfortable yeah. good um just a, a few notes over here. They have like a radiant heat and then here they have a space to put your wet shoes or boots or if you're out hiking and dirty things. So that's actually a oh. nice little touch, I thought. I was thinking it's for the firewood. But I think you're probably right. It's for your muddy shoes. Right. When you come in out, out, out right. from the hike. From a hike. And then over here they have your coffee bar. So they have um, stuff I don't use here, but creamers and stuff if you have to have it and then coffee which is really nice and actually lifts some little plates and dishes there's a toaster there if you wanted to pick up bagels or whatever you could do that they have a fridge here for everything so i think that's actually very cute uh a nice little thing and it's tucked in here this is a small room but that's okay it is our steel it is our steel yep i see the garbage is tucked away nice yeah. and neatly which is yeah. nice this is our fireplace which we are going to use tonight so they do for sell fun. you, yeah. <laughs> it's well, not cold. I yeah, think it's going to be cold to to tonight. For us, that'll be cold from Florida. But they do sell you firewood if you want to purchase it for six dollars. So that, I think that's a great thing. And I don't get fireplaces in Florida, so I'm excited about that. All right. TV. Nice, yeah. pretty big flat screen TV. And then over there, you want to go show? Over here. Oh right. And here is the closet, which has two robes. And even, I believe these are little, uh, what do they call these? Spa shoes. Spa, yeah, slippers. Spa, spa slippers. slippers. Yep, iron. 
a luggage rack, extra pillows. Yep. And just in case, and yeah. a blanket just in case you get cold. Yeah. Fire goes out. Yeah. We leave the door open. Yeah. It's gonna get cold. And we're gonna go check out the bathroom, and then I'm gonna show you the best part of this room and the reason I booked it. So. Bathroom. Yep. Go on. You go in. It's a small bathroom. It's a onesie. It's a onesie. <laughs> okay. It's definitely a onesie. A onesie sink. Yeah. A tub. Yeah. yeah. I guess I think. It doesn't matter. It is. It's cast iron. Well, that's yeah. kind of not. That's old school. Old school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, but I just want to say that the the place is very clean. This is very very clean. Good like, for a steel. Yeah, good for a steel. Sometimes you get steels and the places aren't so clean. This is a super clean unit. So, and I also know that they cleaned it and they said your room's not quite ready because we're going to inspect it. And so I love it when somebody come and inspects the room to make sure it's as it should be. So, but come on here. And you got two places to sit, so that's nice. But okay, one other point I want to show you before I before we do this is this. This, this, this horrible thing. What do you call that, Lisa? <laughs> I don't know. I call that a window shaker. Okay. But it's in the wall, so it's gonna be called a wall shaker. Actually, it's brand new. Like if you look, this is not an old unit. Yeah. I never, never, ever, never, ever, 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 never, ever, never, ever book rooms with these in it. Like, because I don't like them. And in Florida, they, well, they don't call them, they don't call them window shakers. For, I don't call them window shakers for nothing because okay. they like shake the windows. <laughs> yeah. Well, in Florida, you don't. I don't like them because they don't cool off the rooms enough, and the rooms start to smell moldy and stuff. But I figured and we're, we're in Colorado, Colorado, so we probably won't need it. It is a little bit warm today, and it has been on, but but it's no problem. Yeah. Like it doesn't smell in here or anything. So so although I never ever do this, I guess I did, and in. Colorado or someplace cold, it's okay. Just in case you need shouldn't it, have to use it, which is better than if you watched our video on under canvas where we wish we would have had it. <laughs> one hundred and one hundred plus okay. degrees. Okay, okay, in the tent. Okay, okay, okay. So now I want to show you why I really booked this room because I scour places to try to find a good steal and a good deal, and this is the exact reason. I mean, besides, I thought it looked clean and it did. This location is the reason I booked this room. So, so here you have a nice the screen. The main event. Huh? This is the main event. Main event. Are you kidding me? This is right outside your room. Hey, you can step right down there on the river. You can actually hear the water. Yeah, you can. We'll hear that all night room. tonight. Yeah, it's gonna. I don't think they shut it off. <laughs> you don't? No. I don't think they turn it off. I don't think they turn it off. Oh, okay. So it's going to run all night long. We'll, we'll let you know if they turn yeah. it off tonight. <laughs> um, but you've got this great sitting area, so you can sit out here and lounge and enjoy the river. I also like it that we're in the shade a little bit. And look at that view over there. Right? Like, really, just a great location. And I booked it because it was on the river, but you know, you don't know if it's gonna be everything you want it to be um, when you show up here, but it is. It's it's actually like, perfect. Right. And a great steal. It is a great deal. Yeah. Tomorrow. Less than $200 a night. Right. Tomorrow we bring you the, tomorrow, the splurge. Yeah, tomorrow's the splurge. Tomorrow's the splurge. we're gonna enjoy this, so. So stay tuned. Yeah, but, but. I really like this. I like I don't this know too. if the splurge can outdo it. I'm just telling you. This is a great little setting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if the splurge can beat it. Anyway, okay. We'll talk We're gonna to you see. soon. All right. So here at the Fall River Inn, 
They have a patio bar. Happy hour, maybe? I don't know. That's open from 9 to 6. I thought from 6 to 9. Yeah, that's right. 6 to 9. 9 to 6 would be a lot of open. Yeah. Live music. Live music tonight. I How hear them. Get there? This is fun. We get lost. So you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see stairs. This is patio. Hot tub. Mm, there's a few hot tubs around. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. 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 Hi, don't you know? Ooh. <laughs> it depends how hoppy it is. Is that hoppy? Yeah. There you go. Now we're in a yeah. <laughs> Girl. Yeah, I'm not really, I'm not a huge IPA person. Oh, see? But I'm, this is very popular. I'm pretty hoppy sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes a little sad, sometimes yeah. hoppy. He's hoppy. Oh, that's too yeah. hoppy for me. But you may like that. It's not bad. Let's, and the other one's, uh, the other one's amber. amber. Yeah, let's try the amber. You want to do the IPA? No, let's try the amber. Let's do the amber. You want to try, try it? Yeah. Try it. Try it to make sure he likes it. I think I might do the fat right now. Okay. Let's see how it tastes. Okay. Let's see how it tastes. 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 Let's I think I'm going to do a fat tire. The first tire? place I ever had fat tire was in Colorado, really? so... That's where they make it. And so here we are again. Perfect. Thanks so much. Oh. What kind of beer did y'all get? Uh, fat tire. Oh, okay. I got... And this is the amber. Amber. Shall you try it? Yeah. The amber yeah. is good. So we used to have a Jeep that we sold, and um, we that never we never took four wheeling. Yeah. So Paul was like rather upset about this. So he's like, "Okay, we're gonna go to my old stomping grounds in Colorado, and we're gonna go for off roading." So here we are. Let's go off roading. Let's do it. <laughs> There's the sky. There's the dead. And there's Paul. There's me. I don't think of off-roading as being a peaceful activity. No? But apparently it is. That's well, because you look at the commercials where they're, they're like jumping and looking through <laughs> it. It's like, that's not for a <laughs> That's like Baja. <laughs> I don't know if there's a name to this trail. I've never seen any before. It was beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Oh, here we are. This is the top of, well, the top of the mountain. Well, I have loops back around, it goes up and around, but we're going to call this the top. For top of our off-roading. Top of our off-roading. There's the Jeep. And there's the view. There's the view. It's amazing. Yeah. And we have video of going up this too, so. Yeah, and we're going to take them there just a touch. Yeah. Okay, let's go.
Okay, Paul and I decided on a sunrise up the mountain into Rocky Mountain National Park, so we're getting our coffee. I still have sleep in my eyes and I can't wake up yet, but let's go do some hiking and see some beautiful scenery. Are you ready? Moose, I hear. Oh, moose, yeah. Maybe we'll yeah. see moose. All right, let's go. Okay, right now we're going through Rocky Mountain National Park. There it is, it's absolutely beautiful. But here is what our map looks like of the road that we're taking up Trailhead Head Ridge. Trail, Trail Ridge Road. Oh, Trail Ridge Road. Um, okay, it's gonna be a little windy, so. Okay, well, here we go. Windy and fun. Windy and fun. There's the beautiful valley. Comes our first hairpin. We're heading up. Yep, yeah, here comes the first hairpin. 15 mile an hour, all the way switchback. This is what they call a switchback, isn't it? Okay, so we're on Trail Ridge Road, above the timber line, looking across, and this is the Rocky Mountain National Park, by the way, and we're looking back to where we were, which was Medicine Bow, which is way off in the distance there. And this is called Medicine Bow Curve. This short tra trail crosses the tundra. So this is the tundra we're on. A Russian word for land of no trees. I didn't know that. Hmm. Winds can exceed 100 miles an hour. And temperatures remain below freezing for at least five months of the year. Hmm. Starts the, so the tundra starts at elevations of 11,500 feet and actually covers a third of this park. That's kind of interesting. So a third of Rocky Na National Park's above. Timberline? Yeah, above Timberline, above 1,100. Thousand. Thousand feet. <clears throat> glacial landscape. So those are glacial cirques in there, they call them. Hmm. Forest Canyon below. Interesting. The bowl shaped amphitheater like depressions that glaciers carve into mountains. As you can see, it gives you an idea of how vast this is. Yeah. You can start to see how tiny the cars are that from the way. I hear a river down there. Yeah. 
That's the Falls River that we stay in on, I believe. Yeah. There's a lake over there, too. Oh, yeah. A uh, pond. Yeah, well, it's lake probably pond. a lot bigger than a... Yeah. You want to... Okay, here we are, the, the top of the world. Yeah, so we're at Rocky Mountain National Park and we got up super early, well not super early, but early, early. and left the house by 6.30 and got to the park like 6.35 because we were staying three miles away. And the reward is this, we are looking out at the tundra. There is nobody here. Like there's hardly anybody in the park. It is so peaceful and quiet. Right, it's amazing over here. And it, the beauty is just incredible. The space is amazing and well worth um, getting up and coming early so you can enjoy this really by yourself. Yeah. So we're enjoying this all by just by ourselves. Oh, one thing to remember that we didn't talk about is the timed entrance. So you can't come into the park. They, they time the entrances, so you have to make reservations just to come into the park. Yeah. So, But we came in early before you have to make reservations. I think it starts at like 9 a.m. No, that's what it says, but I think they start reservations earlier. So anyway. Um, Something to look at before you come. But to there was nobody at the ranger shack at 6.30, and so we just drove right in, which was perfect. Yeah. And the reward is this. The, the I could almost sit here for a few hours and enjoy this. It is so Picnic quiet. Right here. Yeah. Yes, I wish we cool. would have brought our coffee and <laughs> um, something to eat because this is well worth it. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Alpine Ridge Trail, the challenging hike of the affectionately known as Huffer's Hill. <laughs> at Huffer's Hill. We'll Marty Huffy. the way in more ways than one. Okay, good. Huffers All right, let's Hill. try it. Hello, there it is up there. Yep. There's a room. Hi. Yo. We're from sea level. And we're already up at almost 12,000 feet, so. Challenge. We'll be breathing. All right, see you at the top. Okay, there's how far we've come. And that's how far we gotta go. <laughs> Stage two, stairs. Stage one, ramp. Okay, I'm hopping. This is huffing, too. huffing on Huffer Hill. There's how far we got to go. <laughs> and this must be midpoint because we have a thing saying, takes your breath away. It does. And that's where we came from. Let's see if we can make it. Okay, we're gonna make it right around the corner. <laughs> oh wait, it keeps going. No. We might have to call this, we made it. <laughs> okay, so before we thought we were at the top, but now we're at the top. And over here, there's a sign, come over here please. Look at this. We are at 12,000 feet. All right. Point 12,060. <laughs> Above sea level. Right. And sea level's where we live. But yeah. we do go skiing up this high. And we can feel it. We can feel it. I can feel it. No, I can feel it too. Definitely Huffing Huffing Hill. Yeah. Awesome. And the view yeah. is 360 degrees of amazing. And the point over there, that's I'm gonna, medicine. Minute, so it? way over there, medicine bowl is where we're going next. Yeah, Medicine Bowl Mountains is over there and that's where we're gonna be going when we go up to Wyoming. So, so it's here, I'll point to it, where is it? It's right. Just keep going that way. Right there, yep. Right there. Yep. Medicine Bowl, top of the rock. So now I 
know what it feels like to complete to summit Mount Everest. <laughs> okay, maybe not. So close. So, so it feels like it, and we're in the middle of like we're at the top of the world. I'm on, I'm on top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> he grew up in the Dave grew up in the wild suburbs of Los Angeles. Hello. Hi. Wow. 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 Yeah, Don. Wow. Holy crap. Wow. 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 <laughs> and you can't get out of it. So good. It's 360. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, you're on the no, no, You still no, get out there. All right. Okay. What's the best thing on the menu? Um. Well, most popular, I will say, it is the pork pork, the brisket, and the St. Louis ribs. Okay. Um. Chicken is really good. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Would you guys like to start with something to drink, Grandwin? Right I would. I'm bringing up beer and water. Oh, and so start with some water here. Beer menu. Yeah, water's but for sure. Beers, you have beer menu? Yep, it is right over there on that cut. Right there. There you go. I'll be right back with that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is, where, where do they call this thing? The family oh, platter? The not teeny wahini. Not teeny wahini, that's yeah. right. At, at smoking dates. Yeah. This thing is you 42 bucks. All that. Plus, yeah. plus sides. Potato plus sides. salads, three sides, four sides. Four sides. Okay, oh, yeah, this thing's crazy. Good deal. Okay. Dig in. I'll spend a little time kind of on how I approach a glass of whiskey and start this off. Um, by no means is this how to taste whiskey, because I find it rather ridiculous trying to sit here and tell you the correct way to enjoy a liquid. <laughs> That's silly to me, right? Um, but this will just be kind of how I have found I get the most out of a glass of whiskey in a setting like this, right? Mm -hmm. Neat in a lineup, tasting multiple things in a row. When I'm not hosting these tastings, I'm picking all the single barrels of whiskey you see out there. I'm writing tasting notes for bottles of whiskey, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is just how I have developed my process and also a lot of information I've stolen from guys who have made whiskey for 40 years, right? So a couple of useful tips and tricks in here that I've picked up along the way. So we'll kind of just walk through the first glass together. It's the only time in this room I will ask you to observe patients with your whiskey. Don't sit until I tell you to, that sort of thing. So we just want to talk out, talk out what I'm thinking about, right? What I'm looking for. Every glass after that, have at it. Enjoy it how you like, right? Let's, all right, let's move on to this next whiskey. If you're like, oh, you know what? I like some of the things you did. I'm going to steal that. Cool trick. I have my own way of tasting whiskey. I've been tasting whiskey a long time. That's great too, right? At the end of the day, the only thing that matters to me is that you enjoy your whiskey. If you want to shoot them all back and stumble out of here, good luck to you. Um, I'm not going to help you get out the door or anything like that. Stop bartending for a reason. It's not really what I want to do with anymore. Um, but then after that, we will launch into what you guys are drinking, some stories behind the distilleries, who they are, what they're about, what they're making. Um, what this room is about, what this project is, what we're doing down here. And while you're nosing the whiskey, don't feel like you have to just shove your nose in this glass and, right? Because if that kind of happens. Whiskey is minimum 40% alcohol. That's a lot, right? This isn't quite like a wine. A wine's like high end, 15%. This is a big jump. There's a reason we're using these little tulip shaped glasses, right? These are designed to bring those vapors, bring those smells out to you. I always advise put some distance on it at first. Start smelling slightly farther away and you expect to be able to smell the spirit in here. Gentle, short, soft smells in. You just move the glass away for a moment and between smells, gives your brain a second to process, also gives your nose breaks. So you sit here, inhaling all these alcohol vapors, leaving your nose in here, nose is gonna get overworked, get tired, you're gonna lose your ability to check the nuances in this glass. On this next smell, what I want everyone to do is open your mouth slightly and inhale through your nose and mouth at the same time as you smell this whiskey. And you'll notice a huge difference in how much you can smell. The alcohol notes are gonna go way down, it's gonna get a lot richer. A lot more complex. You can kind of taste it in the back of your palate a little bit, right? The reason this works is it's kind of like if you've ever been in a car with somebody and they roll down the window and you get that in your ears. 
All they're doing is they're rolling down the other window and creating a crash breeze. Instead of having alcohol vapors bouncing around our nose in order to escape to, we open our mouth, give an easy escape route, so our nose can better smell all the other heavier vapors coming out of this glass after that alcohol. So, what does this smell like, guys? What do you think? What's this remind you of? A little caramel, right? Cherry. A little cherry. Ooh, we're going in a sweet direction. Caramel, cherry, heck it does yeah. have a bit of a sweet note to it. For yeah, sure. yeah. Well, I get an earthy. Yeah, you get some earthy. I smoke some many cigars. That's fair. Yeah, I can tell by the t-shirt. It kills a lot of my. Yeah, you're used to cherry the big flavors, right? Though. It's gonna take a lot to get to that, right? Okay. Oh, and by the way, I want to highlight when I ask this question, there is zero wrong answers. When I ask, what does this smell like? What does this taste like? What does it remind you of? Whatever you say, whatever you taste, and whatever you smell, 100% yes, you're absolutely right. It does not matter. If you say it with confidence, someone else at this table will agree with you. I guarantee it. I've had people in this room be like, Grandma. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, like Grandma. Don't know if you want to get into that at this room full of strangers, but whatever you smell, whatever you taste, you are not wrong. And I always like to think of being a kid, right? What is this most like? What does it remind you of? When you're a kid, some of those smells are the most ingrained to your memory, right? Those crucial smells that remind you of growing up. Think of things like that. Put those kind of smells in your brain while you look for something in this whiskey. It's fun, right? Um, this is a trick I learned from the old Scotsman, so it's a pretty fun trick. I want everyone to put their glass back down on the table. I want you to put one hand on the top of your glass, just like so. Pick up your glass with the other hand. I want to splash a little bit of whiskey onto the palm of our hand. Just like that. Once your hand's wet, just put your glass back down. Flip your hand over. I want you to rub your hands together. Keep it nice and close to your nose, right in front of your face. And then right when your hands are almost dry, give it a clap and smell your hands. What do you smell? The oak kind of came out, right? Grassy. Yeah, yeah the grassy, the grains really kind of jumped out. A little leather. A little leather coming kind of through. It's changed, right? It smells different on our hands than it did in the glass. So people are going to look at me crazy when I do this in other Huh? People are going to look at me crazy when I do this in other places. No, trust me, I've done this at the Lafroy Distillery. I've done a lot every, more than that. And then everybody copied me. Um, I'm serious. I've done this at distilleries. I've done this with <laughs> some very fancy whiskey people. Um, so what we're doing, why I'm making you put whiskey in your hands and rubbing it, because you can tell there's a big difference. You can kind of smell a little bit more Does first take on your hands. It? Nailed it. We're evaporating out all of our alcohol. So the only thing left on your hands are the oils that give this whiskey smell, give this whiskey flavor. And this is a really, really useful trick for opening up the nose of a whiskey. Because we can get that alcohol out of there, especially if you're smelling something that's a little aggressive, right? Where you're like, that's nail polish from the gasoline. I can't smell a single thing past that. This can get that out of the equation, give you a better sense of what's going on in it. And if you think about those grainy, woody, leathery kind of notes we just got in our hands, and you smell your glass again, you notice this glass has totally changed. It smells like a new whiskey. There's so much more nuance, there's so much more going on, there's so many more layers to it. That's because our human brain is designed for pattern recognition, right? So what we've done is we've showed our nose, what does it smell like without alcohol involved by putting it on our hands? Now our nose is trying to find things that smell exactly like this. So it's better at detecting the other things that aren't just alcohol. But I want you to, one, focus on coating your whole tongue in whiskey, and two, let it spend a couple seconds moving across your palate. Basically, don't swish it around like mouthwash and shoot it back, right? Be a little slow and gentle with it, so it spends a couple seconds. As long as you're comfortable, make sure the swallow is gentle, nice deep exhale out. Have at it, tasting sip of whiskey, and then I'm done managing everyone's enjoyment. Uh, there's two big reasons I like to taste my whiskey this way. One, we have different taste buds on all the different parts of our tongue. They just taste different flavors based on their location. So I want this whiskey to hit all the different kinds of taste buds we have. Try and find all the little flavors hiding in this whiskey. And two, as some of you might have noticed, as you let whiskey hang out in here, as you move it around, the whiskey's gonna react with the natural environment in our mouth and the saliva and the natural enzymes and things. It's gonna cause a lot of the alcohol to burn off up here, which can yield really big, bold, rich flavors. Also, maybe you might make parts of your tongue feel like they're going a little numb, right? Especially if you're not used to sipping whiskey this way. Bottom of my tongue. Yeah, bottom of your tongue feels a little, a little on fire. But that's also going to really reduce the burning in our throat and minimize that Kentucky hug we get in our chest because we've mostly burned off the alcohol up here, which can yield big flavors. Also, kind of gets rid of that heartburn feeling, which I know some people love. Some people, that's why they don't like whiskey.
reservations at 8.15. Yeah, we're at Burton Gyms in Estes Park. Okay, so I read up a little bit about this place and what they, how they came up with the name. So there was a woman with the, la with the name Bird who came to Estes Park and stayed here for a month and fell in love with it. And while she was here, she met this guy named Jim. And Jim lived in a cabin all by himself up in the mountains. Mountain Jim. Mountain Jim. And apparently Mountain Jim had, had a rough uh, meeting with a bear. And he was in Grand Lake and ran into a bear and a bear took out his eye. And then he rode two days to Grand Junction? Granby. Grand Junction. He Grand was in Granby, which yeah. that's where Grand Lake is. Okay. And then he rode to Grand Junction. Yeah. Which is a long ways from here. Two, 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 two days. Day two day ride. With his eye to get hospital care for his eye. So one of the things about um, Colorado is there's flies. But yeah. anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. But anyway, so they took those two people um, being the frontier kind of feeling of, you know, this is what Estes Park is about and named this place after it. So it's named Burden Jim. Anyway, so Paul got. So, yes, this is the carnivore. So what this is, is, is it's um, an elk filet. It is a lamb chop and a game sausage. And then there's veggies and potatoes underneath. And um, that is a lot. Yeah, so. It's embarrassingly a lot. Yeah. Anyway. It looks delicious. Okay, let's try it. You come here. Yeah, this is over the top. This is good. So here we are above the timber line. That's what it's called, right? Yep. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, a little scary for me actually because I don't like heights much but so uh, the reason I wanted to show you this is this is the what happened when and how Stephen King ended up staying at the Stanley Hotel so he was coming and he was going actually through the Rocky Mountain National Park over to I don't remember where Granby must have been going to Granby. Going to, he was going to stay at some cottages down in Granby, I believe it was. But anyway, it was through the Rocky Mountain National Park. And he came up here and it says, be careful, the weather changes quickly. And he's at the end of the season, so he's going into winter. Yeah, so he was here, I think that must be September, October. But anyway, at the end of the season and it was going into winter. And he started to cross, he and his wife started to cross these, um, the national park here. And one of the things says is that the weather can change rapidly. And so they got on their way up here in the national park and the weather did change and they got in a snowfall. So they were like, we do not want to be driving through this. And with these roads, I can see why I would be completely freaked out. Like, oh God, I can't look over the edge there. There you go. There's over the edge. Um, but Paul's a good driver. And so they turned around and the first hotel they found was the Stanley Hotel. Now the Stanley Hotel was actually closing down for the season. So they were done. They were like, it was time to close up for the winter, which a lot of the hotels did because they didn't even have heat. Well, this was the Stanley Hotel was at that time, not as nice as it was today, but it was the first hotel that they ran into. And in fact, it was actually kind of run down. Yeah. And they were, yeah, they were closing. Yep, so and they were closing. So there was, they went and knocked on the door and they let him in and they had, you know, the place was shut down. Everybody was gone. But these guys were stuck in the snowstorm and so of course they let him come in. They said, well, we don't have any food. You know, we've got sandwiches. They said they actually took the chairs down from the tables and let them sit in the room with this old classical music playing in the background. So they took the chairs down off the table, fed them sandwiches, and put them into room 217. And from there, um, lots of stories, but we'll tell you the rest of it later. But this is the road 
that Stephen King was on and turned around and stayed at the Stanley, which was very eerie because there was nobody there. It was closing down for the winter. It was a bit dilapidated and it gave him the idea for the book, The Shining. So the very first time I came up to this Trail Ridge Road, I didn't understand, and if you haven't been here, it may not make sense to you, but you can see I keep driving by, we keep driving by these sticks. Long sticks. Long sticks, stuck in the middle of these, or on the side, not in the middle, on the sides of the road, right? Like, and I'm like, why, Paul, are these sticks here? And he said. They're for the snow plows at the beginning of the season after the the snow quits snowing up here so much they come out here and plow this out and that's how deep the snow gets here those those are the markers for the plow trucks to see where the road is can you imagine being on a plow truck and these curvy windy steep fall off these cliff roads where you can't even tell the road goes and you got sticks to let you know that you're supposed to stay between them so you don't fall off the road in your snow plow that's cool. that is crazy to me uh, interesting facts. Okay, finally we are in the Stanley Hotel, which is, by the way, in case you don't know, is from The Shining, which is a horror flick, yeah. right? Which was, doesn't necessarily all filmed here, but it took place here and some of it was filmed here. And, and, and it good. was like super scary the first time I saw it. Freaked me out. Um, I don't like horror when. movies, so so. And, and here then, we are. <laughs> here we are. And I was just I saw a guy in the hallway, and he's like staying here, and he's taking pictures. He goes, "I talked my wife into this, and she's so mad at me right now." <laughs> so tonight we're staying in two thirty six, which is just one of their regular rooms. Well, no, it's well, no, it's a beautiful. This room. is a nice room, and it's not a haunted room or one, one of the room. known haunted rooms. But we are going to stay in one of the haunted rooms that's coming up. Yeah. So stay tuned. And this is um, a beautiful hotel, by the way. It's actually beautiful. Let's check. Anyway, you, you can see down the hall. Yeah. Which, there's no twins down there, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. Okay, let's go check out the room. This would have been one of the way high-end rooms way high back end. in the day. Yeah. This is where the very wealthy stay. Right. So, this so is corner unit, first corner of all, unit, with all yeah. the windows. Which we'll look out in a second. Absolutely gorgeous. Very, very large room. Beautiful carpet. Beautiful furniture. Everything's well maintained. I mean, look at that bed. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous bed. Um, they have a full dresser over here, which again is beautiful. Solid wood on wood. Yeah, which leather, seats and chairs. There's a cabinet over here that you can see in. So again, back in the day, this would have been your closet because the rooms didn't have closets. Oh, really, right. really pretty. There's no, yeah, that's right. There's no yeah, closet. There would be so, no that closet. Is so that is the closet. And then in here, let's check out. Room, which is actually quite large. I love these old tiles. I think they're original. Oh, I bet they are. Like these are just glazed, beautiful subway tiles. Um, the glass is good. That's nice. Yeah, that is nice. Right, and then the, the sinks are, are copper, hammered yeah, copper. Hammered copper sinks, marble tops. Nice. Huge double vanity in this room. Beautiful. Um, Cool. Newer lights, but really cool. Old fashioned, new old fashioned, old fashioned yeah. lights. Um, and they redid this. So maybe they did redo the shower tiles, but if they did, they made it go in and they look at the tiles in the back. They made it to look absolutely beautiful. Right, as if it was back then, except for the, I mean, these are cool. Those are like cool that. and new, but I love them. So the room is beautiful. Let's go take a look outside here. This is kind of get an idea of what. Looks, what the view looks like out here. So you've got the mountains way over there. The and we're looking down at the maze. This is the, the, oh, yeah. the maze garden. The maze garden from the movie too. Mm -hmm. Which this is might cool. have been the maze garden in the movie. It might have been. Yeah, it might have actually been that. So if you know anything about that, let us know. Because... <laughs> By God, we don't know. Hey, we are taking a tour of, of oh, yeah, um, the hotel tomorrow, so we'll know a lot more information about um, beautiful about the history and everything. There's another maze over there too, higher maze. So that's pretty cool. Good. So it's a great room. Excited to be here. Really excited to be here. Like, so, so this so is our room. Cool. 
What do we like it? Beautiful. The bed's amazing. This is a super big size king bed. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's squishy. It's squishy bed. It's a squishy bed. <laughs> Okay, so this is the whiskey bar in Cascade in the Stanley Hotel. Yeah. And supposedly they have 1,200 bottles of bourbon here. Or 1,200 bottles of whiskey. I don't know if that's all bourbon. Whiskey. whiskey. Which I can see they have like a lot. Pretty impressive. So I've got my nice wine. I got my nice Wellers. And Reusable Rare. I got his nice Eagle Rare. Good. And cheers. We just, cheers. Anyway, so he's got salad. I got uh, her bread, all of his kind of cheese butter, which was great. So they have a Declaration of Independence. There's the big John Hancock. Yeah. We hear about how old this thing is. I don't know if it's a copy that got copy that age. Are they age to the left or the okay. But it, this is super cool. Like, oh, here we go. Reprint published in the Department of the Institute of the Bureau of Washington, D.C. That's cool though. pass out on these tours before so if you just flew in from like Des Moines and I'm just picking a city that's flat in elevation you hopped a uh, rental right over here you might feel a little funny at first water is our best friend up here in the mountains guys if y'all start to feel funny just let me know I'll sit you down I'll make a phone call we'll get somebody to bring y'all some water because I don't want anybody to pass out here on my tour okay yeah. it's been a moment we don't want this to happen anymore I want you guys to leave this hotel going that was a beautiful place what a great tour what a nice guy not in the back of an ambulance, okay? <laughs> so rule number one, no passing out. Good, we got it. So we wanted to give you some history of the Stanley Hotel. Now, we did a tour, a historical tour of this hotel, and I highly recommend it. It was super informative. It was very cool. They threw some ghost stuff in there mm -hmm. with some amazing footage, by the way. And they let you see stuff that you can't see just on your own. You yeah. have to be on the tour to get to some of the places in this hotel that are kind of special. Yeah, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I do want to tell you though a little bit about the hotel history. So as you you can come to appreciate as we did this actual hotel and, and how it got to be what it is today. So that um, hotel property was actually bought in 1907 by one of the Stanley twins. So there's two of them and apparently they came from a normal sort of life. Um, I think one of the parents was a teacher or something, so um, yeah, just to, to take the history tour to get it exact. But they came from a sort of a normal life and then started inventing things. So they invented some cool photography things and then they invented the steam car. So it was called the Stanley Steamer. And that was the thing that made them all their money. So now they became uh, fairly wealthy, well not fairly, very wealthy um, back in the day and um, were hanging out with all the rich foes back east. But then Mr. Stanley um, actually got tuberculosis and a lot of people had it back then. And he was not recovering and he was not doing well. It was, they were living in New York, right? Yep. Go ahead. Right. And so they told him. So they told him, you need to go up where the air is dry and, and thin to help with the tuberculosis. tuberculosis. <laughs> um, so that he went, they went to Denver. Yeah. But come to find out that when they went to Denver, it got even worse because Denver was an industrial city. It kind of is still an industrial city and there's a lot of pollution in there. Um, so they decided to move a little bit higher in the, the cleaner air of Estes Park. And that's where they bought the land here. Right, but he, the air did so well for him and he became so much um, better off that he actually recovered the doctor was surprised to find that he was still alive when he came to check on him and he was even started mountain climbing so he was actually hiking up these hills and everything right. as a matter of fact he summited 
Long's Peak, which is one of the highest peaks here in Colorado, it was either two or three times that so, he did that. So during, after the tuberculosis, and he moved up here to Estes Park. So he was so excited about the miracle cure of Estes Park that they built their house out here and they moved out here. Then he was telling all of his friends back east about this place and invited them to come stay with them. Well, when he invited them to come stay with them, they needed a place for the friends and family to stay. And that is why this place, this building was built. It was actually not built as a hotel, but it was built as a uh, guest house for their friends from out east, about 40, 50 rooms here. And then the lodge next door was built the next year because the bachelors could not stay with the women in the same in the same building under the same roof back then this building included billiard rooms and bars and a bowling alley there's an entire um another building of a theater and a stage where they had people come and entertain at night and on the weekends to entertain the guests that were here they had a full kitchen they had to serve everybody food and it was all part free just being part of the stanley stanley's friends so if you were friends you could come stay here in their guest house and that is how this place started. That was just incredible to me. Oh, and then just what the air here and the uh, the elevation did for Mr. Stanley, he actually lived to 92. Oh, yeah. And after hiking and everything, like a full recovery from tuberculosis, which was unheard of back then. So they did turn it into a hotel and then they sold it off in the 1930s. And then the hotel went through its ups and downs, much like, and that was during the depression as things did back then. And it became not as great as it used to be. Well, that's when the next kind of famous person found it. And that was Stephen King. So the story goes. So the story goes, he was up on Trowridge Road, mm -hmm. which we'll talk more about that as well. Trowridge Road is just absolutely amazing, but they were at the end of the season getting into wintertime and, and the season or the weather can change in an instant up there. And that's exactly what happened. They were headed to the other side and got half, halfway up there and the weather changed. So they had to turn around, come back to Estes Park. And in Estes Park back then, everything was closed. Things were closing down for the season. They're just, they didn't stay open year round like they do now. This place didn't even have heat. That's right. So he knocked on the door and, and um, asked if they could stay here. They, they were going to turn him away, but they didn't know where else to go, so they let him in. They opened up one of the, the suites for him. Um, as a matter of fact, Stephen King wasn't really anything. Back no, then. and the suite was room 270. 270, that's right. They Everything was closed up. They had the chairs. On, I mean, they were leaving the next day. They had the chairs on the table in the dining room, and everything was closed down. The food was gone. The food was gone. <laughs> they said, we only have sandwiches. We can give you some they sandwiches. Cut them sandwiches. And he said that he said that he ate dinner in the restaurant with the table with the rest of the chairs up on the tables with this old classical music playing, eating sandwiches, and he said it was the weirdest, Eerie. scariest, eeriest Eerie, yeah. meal he ever had. Which gave him some of the inspiration for his book. And the hotel the wasn't in the best shape back then. Right. I mean it was starting it was, you know, it had seen better days at that time, which also added to the thing. And apparently the bartender um, was here and um, Stephen King went down. They, they um, shared stories about not kind of ghost stories. We found out this the bartender found out that Stephen King was a horror writer. Um, so he's like, "Wow, well, can I share some stories that I've seen while working here?" So they were spent the entire night got lit. <laughs> and talk ghost stories and, and came up with a lot of inspiration or ideas right. for his book and then the last part is that they, stephen king had some nightmares and he went back and wrote the book and there's a lot more to the story but we'll let you hear all that on the tour which you should take when you're here but this is part of the history that um, made this hotel um, which started off as a guest house, ending up being what it is, and I think it's kind of a special place. And, well, it's and an iconic hotel. it is iconic, and it's worth coming here and staying. So, you gotta, you gotta come here once. That's, so that's a little bit of the history. Okay, for now, for our top five reasons to stay at the Stanley Hotel in beautiful Estes Park. And number five is actually bourbon. Yep. But I'm gonna let Paul talk about that because that's his thing. So, so here at their bourbon bar, they have 1,200 different bottles of bourbon. Plus, they have a bourbon tasting 
Plus, they have a room where you could buy exclusive bourbon, single barrel bourbons that you could only buy exclusively here at the Stanley Hotel. You can get them nowhere else. And Paul's into his bourbons now, so he was like, there was too, it was almost too many choices. He was so excited because the list of the bourbons was pages and pages and pages long. So if you want to try something new that you've never tried before and you like bourbon, this is definitely a destination. And so, and to make sure you do the tasting because Paul said that during that tasting, he learned more than he did when he did the Kentucky bourbon trip. Learn more on how to um, uh, bring out the aromas, the taste, the, um, the, the important stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So number the five stuff. is the bourbon. So number four is the beautiful hotel. The Stanley Hotel is amazing. And remember that it was started as a house for the guests of the Stanley. It was not even meant to be a hotel. So when you think about this place and this property from that viewpoint, it's pretty incredible. The hotel itself is not actually over large. I would say it's probably 40 or 50 rooms probably. within this within this building. It's a big guest house. And then the lodge that they have next door, which was built for the bachelors, because the bachelors did not stay in the same hotel as the women did back in the day. The standards. Yes, very improper. <laughs> and so these, the hotel itself is amazing. They've kept it to the real heritage of the hotel so that you, when you come here, you feel like you're stepping into a hotel that was built in 1907, but it has all the modern day amenities. So, uh, you know, if you're coming here, then this hotel is just beautiful and is a great place to stay. So it's our number four reason. The beautiful hotel. Our number three, that was four, number, our number three reason to stay at the Stanley Hotel is the area it's located in. The mountain town of Estes Park is absolutely beautiful and you're just a short drive to Rocky Mountain National Forest. Estes Park in itself is a destination. So it's worth the trip just to come to Estes Park. And, you know, we've, 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 and we've eaten at some amazing places when we're here. There was Bird and Jim's, which was really good. And then we ate at the Hunter's Chop House. Hunter's Chop House, that's right. The food was really incredible. That would probably be my number one place that to eat really good. Yep. Um, when you're here. And then you're just literally a couple of miles from the entrance to the Rocky Mountain National Park. And Trail Ridge, Paul took me, because this was, used to be where he lived. So he took me to all these different places. And um, Estes Park is a great destination um, location to come enjoy the mountains and to enjoy a mountain town and to enjoy some amazing scenery and to enjoy some great food. So we'll do another video just on all of that stuff as well. Yeah, and so here you can stay at the Stanley and be in Estes Park. So that is our number three reason for staying here is the location in Estes Park. All right, our number two reason for staying at the Stanley Hotel is its absolutely rich history. It's really incredible when you think about this property. It was actually built in 1907, and it was built as a guest house for the Stanley's friends to come out. <laughs> so Mr. Stanley, who built the Stanley steamer, got tuberculosis like a lot of people did back then, and he wasn't doing well, and they actually told him to go to the mountains and kind of live out his life for the next few weeks. Go be comfortable. Yes, go, go be, be comfortable, comfortable and die. <laughs> and so he came out to Estes Park, and while he was here, over the well, actually, first he went to Denver, oh. and he got worse. Yeah, he did. Because Denver was very industrial, and there was a lot of pollution That's in true. Denver. So then they made their way up here, even even higher than Denver. And now you can go on these. Yeah. We, um, so he came here to recover, and when he did that, it was so great that he built this house, and he built the guest house and everything else. So the history here is actually just being a part of this and understanding how it came to be is part of it. But what makes it even cooler is the history just doesn't end there because then we move forward in time and we've got um, Stephen King staying here where he tried to go over the mountain pass and couldn't make it with the snow and came back and stayed here when it was sh being shut down. And so all that history and how he then wrote the book, The Shining. So that's incredible. Um, and then now all the hauntings that have come to light because of that. Which kind of segues us right into our number one reason to stay at the Stanley Hotel is is the ghost stories and the, the, the fun of the place. Yeah. 
I mean, you cannot stay at this hotel without thinking of The Shining. You can't stay at this hotel without hearing the different ghost stories that are going on here. And they have ghost tours. You can stay in a haunted room, which is a unique and different thing. You can go on ghost tours and hear all the stories that are going on. You can do your own ghost hunting, which we've done and you'll see in some of the videos. And so... But don't I, worry. If, if there are no evil ghosts no, no, here that they've ever reported, they're all friendly ghosts. Yeah, you know, Nobody's had a bad experience here with... with "Quote unquote ghosts." Yeah, it doesn't. So it it's doesn't not something feel scary. About. You know, I think I can. I don't know, but I can be sensitive to things. I don't feel afraid. I don't feel it's nothing evil here no, at all. No, you know. it's just part. But it's part of the adventure. So, if you're coming to Estes Park and you're looking for a super different place to stay, because that's what we like to do on vacation. And you want a little adventure. Yeah, we like to have some adventure and stay in different places. So, I would say that you definitely need to spend a night or two at the Stanley Hotel. And have fun with it. Yeah. Okay, here we are in Wyoming. There's the Wyoming sign. Welcome to Wyoming. Beautiful. Why? No, that's my absolute favorite room. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. I feel like the further in you go, the better wow. your kids, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is incredible. Veronica, thank you so yes, much. Of course, though, there's nothing else. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. 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 There is so much to do at Brush Creek, and you're going to see a lot of it in the video. But in case you want more to do, there is a whole other set of choices. And look at this. These are all the different things from fly fishing to hunting to hiking, hiking horseback riding, barrel racing. Uh, you can go cattle driving in this place. So we've done a bunch of cool stuff, but there's so much more here to do even if, if that wasn't enough for you, you choose from some of their other activities. So with each cabin, when you're out here, you get one or two or three, depending on how many people you have, golf carts or ATV sort of things so that you can go back and forth without having to drive your car. And that's what you get when you're staying at these cabins. So this is the Grand View cabin. 
And that one is, can you read it? We're gonna go see that. We're gonna go see it too. They allowed us to come see these. And what's super cool is you are, that's our Jeep, but you are right here. And we're gonna go look there too. But this is where they do the sunrise yoga because the views are so amazing. So we are staying at the Cottonwood and the Cottonwood is really just across the little area from the main lodge. So some of the cabins are really, really spread out, but the Cottonwood is located just really steps away from the lodge. And this just kind of gives you an idea. There's these beautiful rocks in the background. There's the fire pit, there's the rocks. You've got perfect sunrise from the patio because There's the fire pit, but then up here, look at, this is our place, the Cottonwood, and you have amazing sunrises. So the sun is rising right now, and this is our, you can see our shadows. This is our room. This is a map of the Brush Creek Ranch. Um, and it kind of gives you an idea of where we are and how big this place is. It's 30,000 acres. And um, it gives you all over here on these trail maps, the roads, the, the two track roads, a single track, the distant markers and the creeks. And then down here, it gives you different hikes. You can take this trail and this trail and it tells you the elevation. So you can know what you're getting into before you get there. So this is a great um, um, map to have beforehand. And just to give you an idea, we are right now. So we're at the rendezvous camp. And that's where we are in compared to this. And um, a lot of these trails go off into this area so you can kind of see where they're going. They said actually at the swing bridge, you can actually get in the creek right there, remember? Oh, yeah. They said you could actually go in the creek right there, which would be fun if you have family and kids or just want to cool off if it's a nice hot day. But this is the uh, where we are and this gives you an idea of how big their, their ranch is. So. We're at high altitude, by the way. The creek would be not a cool off, it would be a cold off. It would be a cold off. Yeah. <laughs> it would be a really cold off. Yeah. All right. For some, great. Some, not so great. Yeah. So, one of the things when we were coming here is we really didn't know how to pack. So, we're coming to a ranch in Wyoming, you know, and what is sort of the dress code? And they do do a good job of telling you, like, kind of what to wear and everything, but you never really know until you get here. So, I would say a couple of things like boots and cowboy boots and cowboy, hat. and cowboy hats people are wearing with everything. <laughs> this is a place to wear your jeans. Um, you know, some people are walking around in their stretchy pants, but not as many that are walking around in jeans and stuff. Um, cowboy boots for girls, cowboy boots for guys, Western shirts, comfortable clothes. And then at nighttime, people do get a little bit more dressed up. I mean, they may wear a dress with their Western boots or they may wear even jeans to dinner. That happened a lot too. I've seen the men in jackets. Yeah, men in jackets, especially at the Cheyenne Club. There was a, you know, one dressy night at the Cheyenne Club, you know, very casual dinner at the Creekside. And then the Pioneer can kind of, you know, casually comfortable, um, but real no holy jeans and, you know, that kind of stuff. Just kind of, um, a little bit more nice looking casual clothes I would say would be appropriate and boots are very appropriate um, to wear when you're here I wish I had brought boots yeah I would have felt more in place and more the part yeah you kind of feel the part if you, you played the part you feel the part and it just makes it that much more enjoyable I think yeah so it's like much cooler when you come here make sure that you bring lots of jeans you bring your boots you bring comfortable <laughs> shoes you bring a hat uh, bring bug spray and bring sunscreen too if you're coming in the summer. There's lots of activities to do, so you got a bug yeah. spray, bug and, and sunscreen. But we yeah. haven't really run into a lot of bugs here like we did it's in Colorado. Bad. No, yeah. and they thought it was buggy this year, and so um, if it's this not. Buggy, and I don't like bugs, so it's not too bad. But sunscreen. But anyway, uh, everybody's walking around in their boots, so it's appropriate to bring. And heels are a little tough here because you've got <laughs> rocks to walk on and gravel and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'd keep your shoes lower lower heels. Tip. Good tip. Good job. I like it. So we're going to do some s'mores tonight in Wyoming under the stars. 
And look, we asked for a s'mores basket, and here's what they brought us. An entire thing of graham crackers. Like, oh my, there's two of us. A whole Eight. case of chocolate bars. <laughs> right. And a whole bag of oh, marshmallows. Marshmallows. And then we've got the little marshmallow things and the big marshmallow things. So. Holy mackerel. So we are ready to go. And we've got over there. Our, our fire going. Right outside our front door. Yeah, right outside the front door. So mm -hmm. is Lisa making our roast and our marshmallows. <laughs> I'm trying not to burn them. <laughs> I have them too close. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, overall... So overall, you know, there's so many amazing things here, but just that this, the lodge and spa at Brush Creek, it's actually a destination. This is like a place to come to. It's not because it's located near something else. It's not because, you know, you want to be um, located by this site to see or that site to see. This is a destination in and of itself. It's five-star quality service, luxury, ranch, outdoors, private, and there are a ton of stars and celebrities that come here and, you know, places like these don't talk about them. So I'm going to tell you that there's been political figures and families and um, singers and um, race car drivers, Formula One drivers, and all kinds of Hollywood stars that actually come here time and time again. They've been here multiple times. And it's because it is a destination. It is a place where you can come have privacy, you can have the service, you can get all these views and have everything that you want to in a perfect place to stay. That is the perfect place to stay. Yes, and you know, I have to say that this for me has been one of my top five vacations we've ever taken. I'm gonna have to go there too. Yeah. yeah. So, this is way up there, freaking high. Yes, like uh, perfection. Like, if you could wrap perfection in a Western atmosphere, that this would be it. <laughs> That's right. Okay. All right. So, you hope, you're, hope you come here and stay here yourself. And if you do, maybe we'll see you here next time. And for now, goodbye. <laughs> this is the road that Stephen King was on and turned around and stayed at the Stanley, which was very eerie because there was nobody there. It was closing down for the winter. It was a bit dilapidated and it gave him the idea for the bush is shiny. More to come. There you are. Okay, here we are. This is the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. And this is where we're staying. And, you know, a lot of times we like to talk about why we chose to, or why we picked this hotel, or why we chose to stay at this place. And I think this one's pretty simple. It's just iconic. There are there's so many stories already attached to it, and so many things that you can find out. Yeah, and movies and everything else that if you're coming up to Estes Park a uh, night or two at the Stanley is an I would say almost a player. If you like history, if you like ghosts, if you like um, legacies, if you like scenery, then the um, Stanley Hotel in Estes Park is definitely a place. To yeah. go. definitely a place to go. And it's just a, it's someplace Paul wanted to stay. Yeah, forever since I was a kid. I've never <laughs> got to stay here before. We, I toured it as a kid, but um, I came from a poor family. We never get to stay here. This is kind of a rich, um, little, little more rich for my family back then. Yeah. So. <laughs> and so um, choosing the Stanley Hotel was easy, and we hope you choose it too. Okay, welcome to our haunted room unit 407 on the fourth floor of the Stanley Hotel. So this is where we stayed last night. We did a lot of investigations and tried to catch some ghosts. I think we might have caught a few things, but we're going to go through. We're going to throw all of our footage when we get home to see if we caught any really good stuff. Uh, but I, what we did is I set a, set a camera. I sat a camera here. I just kind of shot every 15 seconds of us to kind of see what would happen because the reports in this room was um, a little boy where the covers kept getting pulled up and over and he kept getting tucked in and he was hot, he would push the covers off and he was getting tucked in again. And I think there was another story 
um, where somebody saw like an imprint of the bed, but there was nobody there. But so we're gonna see with our footage. We'll see what happens. Um, but this is the living area of our room. This is our king size bed. Our view out into the patio area. A really nice leather chair, which is nice and cushy and kind of fits the period. I think it just kind of really fits in here. Now we're on our way out, so it's a little bit of a mess, but it has um. Yeah, it has all the old fashioned pictures, which is really cool. It's got a nice little work desk here, which is really nice. But then the bathroom, and this in particular unit, is a big monster shower. Um, more set up for maybe ADA or a handicap, which there's nothing wrong with that because you got a nice big shower. You got a nice big bathroom, and they're really, um, this really roomy and nicely decorated. So this picture is kind of cool because it shows you the Trail Ridge Road, which is what we were. So it looks like it's an advertisement poster, but it actually has the Stanley Steamer on it. So Rocky Mountain National Park, driving with the Stanley Steamer on the road back in the day, and that is the car we showed you downstairs, and that is the road that they were up on, and this was one of their, you know, vacation travel posters. Come enjoy Rocky Mountain National Park in your Stanley Steamer. Yeah, just thought it was a nice touch. Mm. Good. All right. Okay, so this is one of our rooms. So we got two rooms at this day. Like one's haunted and this is a regular room. From what we understand, this is unit 400. So we're going to take, take a look at this. So, and I don't know the difference in the rooms here, but, um, and we are in the mountains. So the AC, by the way, is this little portable AC. And I bet you anything that they take these out in the wintertime because you don't need AC in the mountains. But it is a little warm in here, um, so definitely need AC this time of year. Um, so he's got a queen size bed, and it looks very, actually it feels very cushy, so this is nice. It's got a curry coffee maker, TV, and then the bathroom is really cool, because in the bathroom here, they have the, um, the, the, copper, the copper sink. Um, nice shower, so it's a little narrow, but nice. And the ceiling in here, I noticed that it, it kind of goes at an angle. So I bet you this is kind of a, a one-off room, I'm guessing. So this is unit 400. And it looks like there's, oh yeah, here's the, the closet. Richard's shirt's already in there. Z done moved in. A little bit of a view. And the mountains over there. So that's kind of nice. This is the all famous Stanley Steamer car. Yep. The, um, the car that Stanley built um, in, back in the day. So this is what they used to go up over Troll Ridge Road. So apparently the fourth floor is the most haunted. And you can see these dormers up there. This is actually where we stayed last night and these are part of the fourth floor. Well back in the day when this was a guest house, the fourth floor was actually just an open attic and they would let the kids and the kids' maids and nannies and stuff would all stay at the top floor together. And it was just a big open dormer type of room. So the rooms were actually added after it became a hotel, but that floor is considered the most haunted. Okay, so this is the me, the Stanley Hotel maze, which actually is not original. No. Yeah. Believe it or not, this um, was a thing that they brought. We'll walk through it. Yeah. This is the thing that they brought um, later on in the game, oh, there goes the bells. Um, because people were asking, where is the maze from the movie, The Shining? So they, oh, look, we already came into a dead end. So they built this um, because people kept asking about where is the maze. So here it is. We'll see if we can make our way around. Out of the maze. There's, there's Lisa going to, on a different path. I'm going my own. She's going her own path. Are we going to be up? I don't know. Looks like we do. Oh, it joins up here. Oh, nope. dead end. And dead end. 
Oh my god. There's no way out. <laughs> no, that wasn't a nope, it's not. Look, there's another one. Nope. We told we made a wrong turn way up here. I don't remember going through this mud puddle. Nope, we did we went that way. Oh, that's right, I forgot he was a musician too. Yes. He liked to play the fiddle. Yeah. Or the violin. Yep. Look, there's somebody up in that window. There's a ghost. <laughs> oh, it went away. That's not a ghost. Oh, that was just some guy looking out the window? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I got excited. Okay, so. Nature has endowed Estes Park in a wonderful manner. The grandeur of its scenery. That's a great way to put it. Grandeur of its scenery. Oh, yes. It's deep blue skies, it's clear, cool, invigorating air, it's mountain streams of sparkling soft water, it's sunny days and delightfully cool nights are things the summer visitor never forgets and having enjoyed once desires to enjoy again. I think that is a perfect quote about Estes Park. That's a good way to put it. Hi. Absolutely. So F.O. Stanley in 1928, he said that. And that would have been 20, 30 years after he was supposed to die. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you like that? Nice job. Nice job, sir. Wait, I see a ghost. I see another one. Here we go. Wait, 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 wait for it, wait for Oh, you can't see him through the camera. I can. <laughs> He's waving at us. The ghost is waving back. <laughs> that was perfect. That's actually, that's um the famous, that is the famous Stephen King room. room. Can you zoom in on him? I am. Oh, good. Can't see him through the camera, though. Mm -hmm. It's a ghost that you can't see through uh, cameras. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm interrupted your story. Okay, the rest of the... It keeps, it continues. And they're not snow covered, but we're in summertime. Alright, we made it. So we're staying in room 407. And 407 is one of the haunted rooms. And when you book the Stanley Hotel, you can actually ask specifically to be put in a haunted room. And so we did that and they gave us room 407. So here's what's special about 407. They say that there was a mother and a son staying here at night and the son kept feeling that he was being tucked in and he kicked the covers off and somebody put him back up and he kicked him off and somebody put him back up. And in the morning he was telling his mom, why'd you do that? I was hot. And the mom says, well, I wasn't putting your covers on at all. I didn't wake up at all that night and didn't know any of that was going on. So that's the first spooky story in this place. The second one is that um, there was a lady staying here in the room and she felt somebody sitting on the bed and she turned on the lights and there was nobody there, but there was an indentation in the bed. So that's another scary story. So we're gonna spend the night here and see what happens. So we didn't have much, we didn't really hear anything last night. We need to go through the footage, but all of a sudden this morning we're waking up and our electricity's gone on and off like four times. And I can see lights across the way there. They're still on. And I can see lights in the hallway because it's an old building. And those haven't gone off, but ours have gone off three or four times now. You're getting some energy. I started in the bathroom and I heard a thump in there. Okay, this is really weird. Oh. Look at this. Keeps doing it. My camera's distorting the furniture. I've never seen it do that. So I'm going to share a little bit about some of the other rooms that are haunted in the Stanley Hotel. So room 401 is said to be haunted by Lord Dunraven. And Lord Dunraven was actually the owner, the previous owner of this land before 
the Stanley Hotel and the Stanleys took over this land. So he wasn't actually here when the hotel was built, but they say that it's his ghost in room 401. And particularly in the closet, they say women can feel their hair being pulled or an arm around their shoulder or actually even a hand going up their back. And then the men report that they don't feel very welcome in this room. Now, we don't know whether it's him or not, but that's what they're saying um, in room 401 that if you're staying in that room, that's what could happen. So in 418, they say that there's children ghosts in that room and that mischievous things and a feeling of playfulness take place in that room so that the bathroom lights will turn on and off and that the hangers will move in the closet. Also a mother and a daughter reported that the daughter woke up the next morning and she said that a little boy was tickling her in the middle of the night and she said and the mom says oh my gosh and the little girl said no it was okay i told him to stop and he did so if you want to see some children ghosts or feel their presence room 418 might be the one for you now room 413 might be really scary to some people i think i'd be a little scared on this one because multiple guests have reported a man in old-fashioned clothes standing in the corner now, if I woke up to that or walked around the corner and saw that, I might be really freaked out by it. And they also say that a blue orb with the man's face in it is also seen outside the door sometimes. So that room, if you want to be really scared, you might look that room specifically. Now, in room 428, they say there's a ghost cowboy that inhabits that room. And they said one night a couple woke up to find this ghost cowboy pacing back and forth at the end of the bed. And they said they actually watched him for a few minutes before they politely just asked him to leave. And so he then walked over to the woman, gave her a kiss on the forehead, leaned in for a kiss, and then disappeared. And multiple guests had reported, multiple women guests, having seen or feeling this cowboy leaning in for a kiss in the middle of the night. So women, if you're feeling like you're looking for a cowboy, room 428 might be the one for you. So if you want to try something different in the lodge, room 1302 has a lot happening. They say that they see a shadow figure walking across the room. You can see him against the walls and a shadow figure walks there. And Grant from Ghost Hunter said that a table levitated while he was changing film in there. And that's pretty extreme. And pictures even fly off the wall. So if you're looking for a really active room, that might be the room for you. So room 217, and it's the only room on the second floor. Most of the rooms that see activity seem to be on this fourth floor. But room 217 is the place where it all began. That is the place where Stephen King stayed and his experiences in this hotel became the basis for the book The Shining. So guests have reported in that room that they have come checked in, left, and came back to find their stuff unpacked. They said they have come back to find their shoes all lined up, so who's ever staying there must be very neat. Um, they also see shadows passing through the walls, and at one point it was part of a larger suite, so if they were passing through the walls, they may have been walking back and forth between the two rooms. So if you want to stay in the room Stephen King stayed in, and if you want to stay in the room that kind of started making this place famous, then 217, oh, it's also the room, I almost forgot, that um, the guy who starred in Dumb and Dumber, uh, Jim Carrey, thanks, the guy who starred in Dumb and Dumber stayed when they were filming. And at the time, they are saying that this place wasn't as um, restored as it is today. It was a little bit more dilapidated, as it was also when Stephen King stayed here. Um, but it was still a nice room. And they said that when he was here, he came running down the stairs, story goes, in his underwear, came to the front desk and says, I want out of this hotel right now, walked out and would not come back in except when filming. So I don't know what happened and he won't talk about it on film, but something happened to him in that room that scared him enough that he left that very day. So if you really wanna be freaked out, 217 might be the room for you.